Yes, hopefully we'll get to Winchester this time. There's a place to sit. I'm tempted to do an art. Yeah, views like this are what it's all about, really. There's something wrong here. I wouldn't be surprised if he calls the cavalry. Hopefully that's dear. We'll see if my knee holds up this time. Horrible day to be starting the third of the South Downs away trips. Horrible weather. <laughs> but apparently not going to be like this all day. Or it's not like that down in near Midhurst. But we shall find out. The cooking and the sun is out. I know it won't last. That's cadence. I know it won't last. But you know, it's nice to see graph them down up there. I really, I'm, I'm so tempted to go back up there, just uh, chill out there, but I, I need to get on and get to Winchester. Well, I'm back here again. Yes, you might recognise this. This is uh, Cadence Cocking. And I'll see you back in November. Just had a nice, nice sandwich and coffee, and I'm going to head off. Uh, well, it's weird. Their map says something in the region of 35, 36 miles. Mm, I thought it was 33 miles to Winchester, but I'm going to head that way. This time, not to the Grafton Down and uh, Bottle direction I did last time. Well, the time before last. And then last time I, I did 45 miles and I did 27 miles. So hopefully this is it. We'll see if my knee holds up this time. And uh, yeah, I'm a bit knackered because about nearly three hours of travelling, a 40 minute wait in Guildford. I had to get up early to do that. I only had like four or five hours sleep, so I got to bed late. So it's my fault, but eesh. you'll see. Um, luckily today is not a long day. Four or five hours of, uh, of walking maybe, maybe less than that, depending where I end up. So yes, hopefully we'll get to Winchester this time. Yeah, we just had a shower, and then we had sun, and it's kind of back to cloud again. Maybe it's going to be another shower. It is kind of shuffle weather at the moment. But the scenery is really beautiful. Uh, so I'm just walking up from, from Cadence. And my knee's okay. It started hurting almost immediately, but I not, not the serious hurt. So we're going to see how that goes. I think it's fairly easy today. Uh, I was passed by a lot of hikers when I was sort of in my stressy you know oh I'm trying to you know get all my <laughs> together and get my poles out and get all my oh it's raining I have to get something you know oh, oh I've got too much stuff on you have to go from travel mode to hiking mode and as anyone would know who is uh, neurodiverse those transitions are fun especially for people who have persistent demand avoidance um, like me so anyway Hopefully the rain will stay off, but I've got a feeling more showers going to keep my marmot on. Also, they're christening the Sulkanese. You know, there's a lot of debate about whether you wear fast drying sort of trail runners that aren't waterproof and so they don't fill with water um, if they get wet. Because uh, the problem with Gore-Tex is eventually water gets in them. And, you know, if it's really the deluge, which I don't think it's going to be on this trip. But yes, you can you can sort of find that once you get the Gore-Tex thing wet inside, it takes a long time for it to dry. Or, except things are going to get wet and you wear waterproof socks. I actually have waterproof socks with me. <laughs> Just in case, just in case I have to afford something. Because um, that's obviously the other problem with wearing trail runners versus boots. I think they're better for your feet though. But 
there are other reasons to have trail runners. But the thing is, is, if you've got ankle support and you rely on that ankle support, your ankles don't don't um, become strong. Hence, hence is like the barefoot shoes, which I've been using um, to try and get my foot strength up. The more padding and the more, not some padding, but the more padding and the more ankle support, the weaker your ankles are. And it's not, it's not good for your feet, so. Anyway. Lots of interesting woods around here. Uh, we've passed into the woods. I think there are lots of grouse woods. So, yeah, I think they would probably make good leaky places to camp around here. Woods like, woods like that. I've seen ones um, back there, which look very interesting. This pass running through them, restricted byways or public footpaths, and uh, it doesn't look like the the woods are actually fenced. So, yeah, there's the two camps over boots versus trail runners. I'm in the trail runner camp because I think you know you're. You're not expending much more energy with boots, that is, you are expending a bit more energy. There's, there's a video by Gears Skeptic that, unless you're running, boots aren't massively, they're a bit more exertion. Um, but the lighter shoes you have, you know, it does help, uh, especially if you're, when you're moving faster. But, but also, this is the reason why I've been wearing barefoot shoes. And um, you know, other shoes, this is uh, more cushioning and the more support you've got, um, the more weaker your feet are. So actually, you, can, you want quite Spartan footwear. Uh, you want some cushioning, but not massive amount. And if you have big, you know, big boots rather than low boots, with big sort of, you know, ankle things. You're actually more likely to get damaged with those. I, I found that when I used to wear boots all the time. And you, you when you do get a twist, you know, when you do kind of like go down funnily, actually quite often you damage your foot on the, you know, on the top of the boot, I found. You know, it was, it was kind of like more likely to break your ankle. I know some people say, oh no, I, I, I could wear trail runners, I'll break my ankle. Well, the thing is, is you don't get yourself into a situation where you will break your ankle because you're making sure that you don't sort of root march like that. So, yeah. But I know people disagree with this in the comments. I'm sure they will. Look at the puddles. I have trouble enough falling over on grass as is without, uh, without having a slippy boots that's got a hard a lot of the walkie shoes have the rubber is way too hard it's, it's actually dangerous I think look at this Ooh. lots of wood lots of interesting woodland Some places where you probably could spend the night the Zorkanis are very solid I've done hundreds of miles in the previous league and they survive even when I use them around tarmac because that used to kill my north faces well down I've still got a pair of hedgehogs, I used to wear the North Face hedgehogs all the time. Eventually they got not very good, they reduced the quality of them. But I've still got all some of the classic ones, red, but I don't wear them because the softer the rubber, the more grippy it is, but the more it wears down. But they are brilliant. They, you can walk down sort of like 45 degree grass with that's been raining and, or you know, very steep grass. That's the scenery right there. Look, there's a place to sit. I'm tempted to do an art. Now this, that's an interesting wood down there. Ooh. Oh, this would be a very interesting place to camp. And there's actually a, is that a trackway? I just looked up on the map. I said, oh, as good as a track wagon in there, that's a Roman road. They can't be a Roman road, it's got bends on it. <laughs> yeah, it is. 
It looks like a beautiful place where the South Downs Way crosses a Roman road which goes all the way to Midhurst. Can you get into that wood? Yes, you can. Uh -huh. That's very cool. Uh, a bit early. But, yeah, this would be a good campsite. Not my best, I'm rather rushed. Not the best time of year to do this kind of thing. I think it was dry. <laughs> yeah. It's also a light and a lot from this. A lot. We're at the Devil's Jumps, which are Bronze Age Royal Mounds. There. Go and have a look in a second. And also, aha! Interesting woods around here. I think I can definitely find somewhere to camp around here. I was heading for Hotting Down, but I think it's a bit further than I. I stopped to do an artwork, so. Anyway, let's go and have a look. I one in a minute. But, uh, Mount Everest. <sighs> Looks like there's a viewing platform over there as well. Woods in there look very promising. Can't investigate it yet. This is apparently aligned to the solstice midsummer. This was actually quite a good place to camp. I was tempted to do that. It's a bit disrespectful. Then again, the people who are buried here, long gone. But it is a protected site. But we could, but I think it might be a bit too, too visible. Yeah, around here they call everything remotely. There's the like Devil's Punch Bowl has like three hills and there's a, a myth about that. And there's supposed to be a there was a house in one of them until the twenties or something, which deemed to be a witch's house, but it wasn't really. They're not really shown me trying to find a site much. I usually gonna like, oh here we are, you know, it's a bit of a fate accompli. But yeah, this looks very interesting. Here's those logs over there. There's logging that happens here. But there's no fences and no signs. So I don't know if I'm supposed to be here or not. I don't know. I usually go by the idea that if there's signs or fences, there was kind of slight remains of one, but nothing that, you know, that the, the, there wasn't sort of like I stepped over a fence that's fallen over. There was nothing. Inside there was a little bit of one, but something that was so old and so kind of sort of decrepit, looks like it's been torn down rather than fallen down. So I think there it was a bit too exposed. Um, you can see the jumps there. 
and I'm thinking over here I'll be careful of finding accidental <laughs> tree hollows of course bramble my eternal enemy so I saw deer bounding through the wood early because up there opposite Monkton House there's a wood which is partly barbed wire and some of it, some, you know, sometimes not barbed wire. It's really strange. It's like it's a combination. It's like, oh, some barbed wire, no barbed wire. So I'm like, mm, I don't know what about that one. Because it was opposite Monkton House, I was like, no, because um, you could see the, their garden out there. It's a likely they see. But interestingly, the wood at the end of their paddock, and you know, it's not their land. That sort of, that seems to be part of the path, or not not fenced off. So that's that's one of the other places I was planning to do near where I had a call of nature. And uh, but this looks good. I mean, people visiting the jumps will be able to see me, but I'm going to be gone before anybody would see me. So I think this site is perfect. The site's perfect, I think. Because you're not that visible from the, the jumps. They have like this tower as well. And I think the path should be somewhere over there. Obviously not that visible from here. I don't think so, anyway. I think I found my spot. I saw a lot of these disturbed earth and I thought, oh, it must be deer. But and I went around the corner and found that. So I don't know if it's a badger set. Badgers are very shy animals. They can not bother me, but you never know. Um, I might, I might move in. Yes, the, literally the path is uh, sort of in the middle there. It's hard to see here, but it is slight. I can see my bag from there. I might head a little bit further in. It's a trade-off because I don't want to be too close to the jumps and too close to the that view because that view is lovely but there's also quite a lot of likelihood of people spotting you from there it's a shame because this is a lovely clear space it might be clear because of uh, badgers or foxes or something and I'm just clearing the sight of the big sticks and the stones Well, this time, I did actually bring my... I did actually bring my um, camping mat. <laughs> so that should protect the that bramble. The new bramble. Look here. You bramble, you die. Don't want to be setting up right next to the set or foxhole. Whatever. Oh yeah, and the grouse are so noisy. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up, grouse! Look, I think they go sleepy buys. No, I don't think they make noise at night. I hope not. There are lots of grouse woods, uh, pheasant woods around here. I see no sign of anyone. I've been here for half an hour. Just sort of chilling out and looking for sights. No one's come up. Yeah. Apparently that's Monk Jack Deer. I hate that noise. The tent is up. First it was a grouse. Now it's a bloody deer. The grouse wouldn't shut up. Now it's the deer. I hope I'm welcome in this wood. I found another tent peg. Just saw it fluorescing in the red light. So yeah, different people have been wild camping here. All set up. 
He even found a temp pack. <laughs> as is traditional. I'm about to make a jockey drink and uh, chill out a bit. If I can do so without making noise. It's a new thing. A fridge. It's a monitor with min and max. I just reset it. Yeah, just under six degrees. We'll see how cold it goes in the night. All the noises have stopped. So I've had my chocolate drink with a little bit of brandy. And for dinner, we're doing pasta with truffle olive oil, dried mushroom, and I've got some pre-dum bacon. I might put in some fruit as well, which is a bit like a sort of a summer sausage. And we've got some pasta sauce and parmesan as well. Little's finest with oldie. But yes, it's too cold to do a full... <laughs> it's a below five degrees now, I think, to do a full cooking video. But I'm just going to soak the dried mushrooms um, and put the bacon in and the fruit. And then just, um, I've got plenty of fuel, so I think I might just heat it up. But what you should really do, and I should have done, but I didn't have, I just wanted to get my drink, it was so cold, um, is I should have actually immediately put the, the cold water in to warm it in the pot, the pot's actually quite cooled down now, but it's so warm, and then soaked everything, that's what I usually do. So while... It's sort of warming up the water a bit in the, in the already warm pot after having a drink. I didn't soak the other things in. And I will say in the video that this is a really good thing because it's a butter replacement, cooking, and also you can add it to pasta and risotto and things. And if you get a flavoured oil as well, then that sort of doubles it up. It's a flavouring and also something you can cook with. It's always good to try and double these things up. Um, I'm planning to do a, a proper sort of Julia Childs goes wild camping video when I do the collab in the Peak District. So that's next Saturday. <laughs> so I'm not going to go too much into that. So but I'm planning to do more cooking on this channel. Just it's a bit difficult when we're. I've just been having the lights off because I could have heard some voices and I didn't want to draw attention to myself. But it seems to be quiet now. And things I'm hearing are just animals in the forest. Hopefully that's deer. Only just visible. That's not that many runners running through, but that did sound like humans. Oh well, we're getting up anyway. So yes, look at me with my <laughs> microphone and tripod. No, this is the second one doing this. I had a good night. Oh, fairly good night. Lots of noise from the grouses. Woken up quite a few times. But even, even in the middle of the night, the grouse were sort of <sighs> making lots of noise. And the deer. Seem to be alone here. That might be famous last words. But, um, yeah, I, I thought there was flashlights in the distance and I didn't realise it was cars it was cars coming and going um, but yeah and there's a road near here which started about 5.30 it's now just after 6 it was nice to have, to have the car have the road stop um, during the night so it's actually quite quiet out here I want to go and see the devil's jumps in the dawn and it's currently currently seven degrees the lowest was two and the highest was 11 baltic 11 just from my body heat as well i didn't use a heater really. yeah time to get up um and see how far i can go today i did four miles 
from cooking, which isn't great, but I did stop to do some artwork. If I can do eight miles a day, that'll be good. I don't want to really push it, you know, but I've got a deadline. I need to do this by Friday, so I can't just be, you know, I'd much rather take it slowly and then come back and finish it in a fourth video. I'd rather not, but, you know, but I'd, I'd rather do that rather than wreck my knee again. I'd say this is very good. This is a new purchase. Um, it's by EDZ. It's a merino balaclava, which obviously you can then use as a hat or a, as a net gaiter. So it's very, very convenient and really good for night, really good for sleeping. And so, yeah, let's get dressed and sort out packing and uh, get out of here. <laughs> I might go and film uh, Dawn at the Devil's Jumps. This is way later than I wanted to be. But yes, that's the tent. And this is the campsite. I don't know what the stampede was. I assume it was deer. Because it sounded like it was going near the tent. I mean, it could have been people running up the runners, running up because the, the path's just there. So I'm not completely hidden. Annoyingly, the, the one that was further was a bit more hidden. Looks like there isn't an amazing dawn anyway. <laughs> That's frost. Here's to show how cold it was up here. It seems to be like a viewing thing. It's very Stalag 17. I didn't look at it last night. So, I wanted to do a dawn investigation as you can get up there. It's a bit scary. <laughs> Ah, oh, no unauthorised persons beyond this point. So much for no unauthorised persons. Naughty, I know. It's good view. We don't slip on the way down with the ice. You know, you can't even see where I'm camped. Just on the way down there. What a view is that? Wow. That's the... I assume it's a freezing fog. There's icy, icy fog just laying on a landscape. And there's the devil's jumps at... Well, just after dawn. It's very cloudy and very icy up here. You can see how cold it is in the lower valleys. Wow. It's amazing. Yeah, views like this are what it's all about, really. Just having breakfast. Coffee is very welcome. Um, unfortunately, I forgot my scrubby and my poop trowel, so yeah. I've Poop trowel, I can, I can use sticks, but I need to go and find a scrubby and also get some more water soon. The tent is down, the sun's out, that's what comes and goes. Apparently, it's going to be quite nice today. Today, I'll try and get to eight, ten miles at least and see how many is. It's a beautiful day, something you don't see every day. Apparently a, a junker plane was shot down, crashed in these woods. But yeah, you often see German memorials for down German airmen. Yes. I knew today was going to be good. Part of the reason for coming out this week, got my ticket to meet Moly, camping are also okay at the train station near him. And uh, he's going to drive me up to Peak District. It's the first time I've ever camped in Peak District. Probably the first time I've ever been to the Peak District. I don't think it's a very remote location, but it's. I'm excited just to be anywhere near the Peak District. You know, I'm excited to just be there. <laughs> a place that I'd never thought. You know, like where proper wild campers go. A beautiful wood. Oh, well, this one's got barbed wire. Oh, I don't know. It's got barbed wire, some it isn't. Really sporadic where some things are really 
you know, very kind of fenced or something going on. I don't know. I saw the mist this morning uh, towards towards up Trayford way. I think that's the way. So very glad I was in the woods. Whew. That's not, it's weird that from a distance it looks like water, but it's mist. This is Penn Hill. These forests look very interesting. A lot of very lots of places look very wild camp friendly. But uh, yeah, it's not the worst hill on the South Downs Way. That's Butzer, which is to come, which is the highest. It's uh, you know I think it's exhausting with a nine ten kilogram pack. Knees okay. It doesn't like this hill, but it's not really killing me. It's taking a bit. Harting Down was one of my targets that I was aiming for here last night. Um, I suppose I could have. As you know, I couldn't have got here. Because, um, yeah, it's taken me about an hour and I had only. Um, I could have got here very late. But, yeah, there is there is stuff. That seems to be a massive mole warren or, or a mole hill or rabbit warren. There's stuff there. I don't know about these woods, it would seem to be fenced, but certainly on the down itself, it's not crap weather, it'll be alright. Onward, I'm going to try and get to Harting, South Harting shop, or uh, the, the pub there. They close at 12. <laughs> so I want to get some tissues and mortar. So I'm very low on mortar, I don't see a tap or anything in this section. It seems this section is very much not... Uh, watered as much as the other sections. I'm hoping that's just a, a little blip on this section. It's a bit strange there's water every sort of four to seven miles and this one doesn't. Then again we haven't I have, probably haven't hit the seven mile mark so who knows. Yeah it'd be nice to get South Harting or a, if not I know there's a pub at Burriston. I could probably definitely get there for opening time and then Use their toilet and see if we can get some water from them. Anyway, a lot of these. Luckily, there's a <laughs> there's a fording. Yeah, I don't know. Just had a nice lunch. Well, my food, but sort of sitting on a bench. I got some water from South Harting. It's about half a mile from South Downs Way. And they have a shop. So I had a race to get to the shop, which didn't help my leg, and didn't didn't help me. But yeah, I'm glad I did it because I needed tissues. And they have a toilet there. It's not on Google Maps, but they have a toilet. About an hour in, my back started to hurt like crazy, like like it would hurt um, if I was doing, you know, sort of in the in the afternoon. And so, you know, it's, that's worrying. And also the knee has been hurting a lot. So I've only done five miles, including the, the sort of the excursion to South uh, Harting. This is getting very muddy. Let me don't slip. So yeah, you know, it's, it's rather worrying that you know that I was expecting to do maybe seven or eight hours miles a day. Uh, prefer more, like ten, but I sort of scheduled a couple of days in extra to not um, have to have to stress about this. You know, to have a sort of a, a slower amble and obviously rushing to get to the shop because it closed at midday probably didn't help. But you know, and having the having the the portals has really helped. Having a break really helped, but yeah, I'm a bit. I have been sort of looking for spots to camp because I'm, I'm like thinking it's I'm gonna hit that, hit that wall sooner rather than later. If we do more than five miles a day, six, seven, eight, that would be all right. But we're doing four or five. 
at the moment I've only done four on on the pass today then uh, yeah we won't get there by Friday so mm. beautiful clouds though little fluffy clouds and that's myself harting down there I, I love the fact that they had to have an, a proper public toilet as well um, you know open I don't know if it's 24 hours but you know a proper toilet hasn't been closed got a pub and a shop and a nice little cooking cafe so yeah but I want to get I want to get on and see how far I can get before this gets completely nuclear Burton is a bit like it's something weird about Burton it's like village to the damned sort of it's a nice place the pub's really good had a coke there and we filled my water bottle and they did that they're lovely but I got the third degree treatment just from a random stranger walking up to the choke pits and this has kind of put me I've changed my plans, plans last minute because I was like there's something wrong here you know I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he calls the cavalry and dobs me into the Queen Elizabeth County Park people not happy about camping there anyway because the um, it's very kind of there's lots of people on the paths here and it's very monitored it feels very monitored it doesn't, it doesn't feel like there's places you can go and hide and lots of mountain bikers so the bits which are kind of in between the main paths are quite often mountain bike paths or have been made into mountain bike paths it's a little bit too busy a little bit too nosy it's the first time it's ever happened to me well the, the second the first time I suppose is Amberley the guy in the stores at Amberley um, but it's a shame because I really liked uh, I really like that place but it's um, yeah How do you slow them down though? They zip around the place all the time. Yeah, that man freaked me out. Um, as I was walking up from Burton to the towards the chalk pits, they have these chalk ancient, well, sort of not that ancient, but you know, um, disused chalk pits. This got this bearded guy sort of said, "You've got a very loaded pack." Where are you going? You know, a really leading question. It wasn't just being kind of like, oh, you're carrying a lot. You know, occasionally you get people saying, oh, you're, you must be going far. You know, no, no, no. He wanted to know where I was going. And so I said, Petersfield. Going, and he said, you go, he said, you're going the wrong way. And I said, probably. And just kept going. Um, it, yeah, complete Amberley vibes that. So I was going to go to war war down um or halt down i've just been at halt down and i have to say i'm not really f a fan it's very although it's also weirdly forestry commission because it's a park it's much more open and you can see more things whereas i saw i was considering this place which is a place called head down and i like the idea of you know getting my head down on head down i thought it was quite funny it's much less managed it's much more grown up, much more mature, or much less thinned out, I don't know. And the only downside is, yeah, the places I've found which are flat are underneath uh, pine trees, so pine cones. So I'm not a massive fan of being pelted with pine cones in the middle of the night. I'm just doing my due diligence while I'm recording this just to see if anyone turns up because there are a few of these tracks but they're kind of like they look like they're unfortunately mountain biker tracks so but not official ones but people have made them um so i don't know you know obviously want to stay away from those i don't want to have a mountain bike colliding with me in the middle of the night and i saw deer as well I had to walk up this really steep hill, which wasn't great for my leg. My leg is killing me. 
I must have done at least eight or nine miles per day. Um, you know, including the mile going into Burton and back and the mile or so, maybe more, going into South Harding. So I really, really want to rest. But I want to make sure I've got a good flat space and I want to make sure it's comfortable because I, I, want to, you know, I just want to get some food and go to bed and just chill out. But I saw some deer walking up here which is good news and lots of birds that sort of get, get startled that means people haven't been through here recently so we shall see if head down is good for getting your head down i hope so and so it's a bit of a schlep well it kind of partly connects just before you get to Burton, or have you pronounce it um one of the paths connects so i can actually walk up that uh, and then sort of rewalk bits or double back to where I went, where I came from. Da, da, Who is the bearded man with all the questions? Da, 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 da. Will da, Tim get da, to reach the cathedral da, and will it da, bring da, him da. down? Can da, you da. like and subscribe? Da, da. Can you watch da, this da, video da, from the last da, South Downs Way da, trip? Da, 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 These da, and more da, will not be answered in the next episode da, da, of da, Hike. Da, da, da. Do do do.